What a great way to start a Memorial Day weekend. And as we gather together to worship the Lord, we welcome all who may be visiting this morning with us. Uh, we're blessed that you're here, and we pray God will bless you as we worship together, worship the Lord. If you're joining us online, we welcome you. May God bless you as we worship together. A couple of announcements as we open this morning. Uh, as it's Memorial Day weekend, uh, just a reminder that tomorrow morning there's a special celebration and remembrance at Wellsburg City Park, and there will be refreshments provided at 10, and then at 11 there's the service of remembrance, and you're welcomed and encouraged to make that a part of your uh, Memorial Day weekend plan. There's a sign-up sheet in the front room for a trip this Thursday to Ryman Gardens. And if you're interested in that, uh, you can also uh, talk to me about it. Uh, there is some information on the sign-up sheet as well. We want to welcome uh, the Folkerts here this morning. Uh, there's uh, a table in the front uh, for some information about the Gideon's ministry. And um, just in a little bit, uh, Randy's going to come and share with us more about uh, the Gideon's uh, ministry. This Thursday at 7 p.m., the brass group is going to be practicing. So if you're involved with the brass group, uh, make plans to come this way, and we'll go through some of our uh, numbers for uh, the next time we play. So uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. for that. It's always a great day to come and worship. This is no exception. And uh, I'd like to open with a few verses from the Psalms. Psalm 29, uh, verses 7 through 9. It's been a stormy week. And these are some words that uh, the psalmist has in mind after a storm that he went through. And uh, we read from verses 7 through 9. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry, Glory! And it's thought that perhaps the word temple there suggests the entirety of God's creation impressed at the almighty acts of God. And to be sure, there was strength in the winds and in the thunderstorms of the week and even some tornadoes. And uh, a special word of thanks uh, to Doug, uh, Doug Fries, who helped us out at church. We lost a tree uh, you maybe noticed that uh, coming into church today. Um, it's still got some work to be done, but uh, there's some initial cleanup that he did, and I think he had some helpers too. Thank you for that. Um, but let's worship the God who's almighty, even over uh, the storms. And let's stand and receive the word of greeting that comes from Almighty God. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, grace to you and peace from Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, His Son Jesus Christ, and the work of God in His Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's praise Him in song. Our first hymn is Shout to the Lord. We'll remain standing and the words are on the screen.
Let's take a moment and greet each other. Morning. Yes, yes. You can be seated, and let's open in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you and we bring our worship today, this morning, together. We praise you. Your strength is far above our own. We read about twisting oaks. That's not something we can do, especially with our voice, but you can. And we are mindful that you as the Almighty One also are the one who loves us. And you love us so that you sent your Son to die for us. May you be honored today. Amen. My Jesus I love thee, I know thou art mine, is our hymn. We'll remain seated. Let's sing the uh, stanzas are on the screen. If ever I loved thee, my Jesus, tis now, and that love that we are to have for the Lord is further given to us in 1 Corinthians 13. I'd like to share that now. When we think about God's will for us, is that we love him above all and love our neighbors as ourselves, what does that mean? And yet I'll show you the most excellent way. If I speak in human or angelic tongues but don't have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but don't have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. 
But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then, we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And uh, it's a joy to be able to welcome Pastor Randy Falkerts here. Um, Pastor Randy is working with the Gideons, and he's going to come forward and share. Um, we set up our lectern there for you, Randy. And uh, it's a joy to have you here today. Uh, one of our elders mentioned that it was some time ago that the Gideons uh, supplied a whole bunch of Bibles to a ministry that he's very familiar with, um, uh, a ministry in Uganda, Africa. So uh, we, this invitation comes with thanks that 300 Bibles were given uh, to that ministry. So we welcome you, Randy. Uh, we look forward to hearing about the Gideons. Thank you, Pastor Steve. I'd like to start off with giving you a feature testimony by Don Preston. Don was a, a si one, Don and his siblings were anything but stable in his young life as a, as a child. They spent time in and out of foster homes, homeless shelters, and at times living in uh, a car or a park. I had no respect for authority, Don says. While in jail at age 18, Don first read the Bible, which the, Gideon, which the Gideons placed there. At first, he used the pages as rolling papers to smoke, but then he began to read them. I would love to tell you that that's the end of my story and how it turned out good, but that's not how it worked. Don continued to hang out with criminals, using his chemistry knowledge to access technical resources he developed methamphetamine, methamphetamine, or meth, on his own. He didn't do it for money. He didn't do it for anything else but to prove himself as being devious and how devious he, was, he could be. Eventually, all the illegal activities and with his criminal friends caught up with him, and the authorities caught him and put him in jail in the Arkansas Department of Corrections. He was there for 15 months. Upon release, he got off drugs and alcohol and started to rebuild his life in his own strength. He got a job at a food processing, processing plant and rose to be the manager of that food, process, food processing plant. Still, he did not have a love for anyone except maybe his kids. He found out his wife was cheating on him and he fell to pieces. He cried, what have I been doing for so long? What was it all for? John started doing drugs and alcohol again. He ended up in jail again. Don was bored when he got to jail and he decided he was going to read the Bible. He was, and his, the Bible that he read was placed by the Gideons. On September 12, 2014, Don was pulled from the jail cell and he was told that his daughter Stephanie had come had died as a result of alcohol and drug drugs. Don says, I fell to my knees, curled up in a ball, and called out to God, I surrender all. Mm -hmm. Take me and do with me what you want. <clears throat> he refers to it as his Psalm 138 moment. In the day that I cried out, you answered me. Back in the jail cell, that Bible strengthened Don and brought him closer to God, and he found peace with his Lord. Through the miracles, 
Through the series of miracles, Don was released from jail. I am truly blessed, he says, with a purpose and a heart and a beautiful, God-fearing wife now. With, and my relationship with my children is so much better. The Lord has uh, made me into a new creation. Don is grateful for the impact of the Gideons in his life. This is the gospel transformation power of the Gideons, international impact. An estimated 30 million people die each year without the gospel. Gideons International is a global organization dedicated to distributing God's word to 200 countries, territories, and possessions, ensuring that people worldwide will have the opportunity to read and know Jesus Christ. Read the Bible, know Jesus Christ. We currently have 269,500 Gideons and auxiliary members worldwide. On December 10, 1908, the first Bible was placed in the Superior Hotel in Superior, Montana. Over 2.2 billion testaments have been handed out since then. In September 1898, back in horse and buggy days when people were uh, salesmen and they went door to door, John H. John said. John Nicholson and Sammy Hill had a chance meeting at a Central House Hotel in Boscobel, Wisconsin. And there they felt the need to reach out to salesmen and people who had come to the hotels. And so they started the ministry called the Gideons there. We are volunteer evangelical Christian missionaries and businessmen in our wives, living in neighborhoods around the world, serving Christ, helping others to grow in maturity and in the world. We want to, want to be a blessing to you and help you by working together to help you fulfill the Great Commission as an extension of your church. I call this teamwork. We want to be part of your team. We want, you to, we want to bless you so you can bless us and be a blessing to God. Then when you get to heaven, you'll have a reward from Jesus, and he will tell you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Gideon testimony submitted by W. R. Neal from the camp in Texas. Neal's camp received a request for a Bible from Luciano Morales, an inmate in the local county jail. I plan to deliver the Bible after my haircut. On the way to the jail, I phoned the chief deputy and asked permission to see Luciano Morales. When I told him that that name, the man said, oh, he's been released. Well, then I decided I just might as well go to the barber shop and get my hair cut. There was one customer in the barber's chair and another waiting. When the barber finished the haircut with the man in the chair, he arose and looked at my insignia or my little pin and said, I've been touched by the Gideons or been in touch with the Gideons. And he um, said, I would like to talk to you about getting a Bible. And Luciano, it was Luciano, who was the man I wanted to see in the uh, prison. The Gideons, and he asked the man there who came to uh, ask Neil that, uh, would you please write your name in, my, in the Bible? And he said, sure. And so he did. I pray for Luciano Morales that God's word would transform his heart and life and that he would follow Jesus Christ all his life. We stand on the promise of Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It shall accomplish that for which I purpose and shall succeed in things for which it is sent. We place Bibles in nursing homes, police departments, doctor offices, fire departments, jails, women's reformatories and juvenile reformatories. We place Bibles in public libraries, hospice centers, attorney offices, hotels, motels, universities. In fact, this year, I think we placed or gave out over 5,000 different testaments or test, small testaments to uh, the college kids in Iowa. We hand out Bibles at public schools in third grade and beyond. We also hand out testaments at festivals and fairs. For our young people, we have a book called The Life Book, and it's for the people who are teenagers, and they can uh, enjoy the Bible 
as in their language, and you can order that Bible for free from Gideon headquarters. Mm -hmm. Any church can do that. You can also show your generosity to a loved one with our good Gideon card program. I don't have any, I have Gideon cards for you in the back there on the table, if you'd like to pick one up. I believe there's a, and, um, what you can do is you can fill out the Gideon card and ask the, us to place so many Bibles, and we will place those Bibles for you, and you can send, use that card to send as a memorial or as just a greeting card to uh, help somebody. Uh, support, just give them a, a lift their, for their day. Your active support is not just important, it is crucial to our mission. By becoming a friend of the Gideons, which you can all become friends of the Gideons, you can access many benefits and uh, a vital, be a vital role in our efforts to distribute God's word. Your involvement can significantly impact our efforts to save souls and make um, for Christ. We invite you to learn more about this opportunity and to talk to me after the service at the table, and I'll be glad to tell you more about being a friend of the Gideons. Remember to pick up the Gideon app. I have a couple of Gideon apps on the table there for you, uh, for your Android phone or Apple phone. And it has 95 languages on it, and if you'd like to learn Japanese, you can learn Japanese too, because <laughs> that's on that phone. <laughs> at Gideon's International, we strive to be transparent about our financials, 95 cents of every dollar you donate to go directly towards distributing and placing New Testaments for free in the hands of someone who wants a, a Bible. Only five cents of this allocated for upkeep and administrative expenses. We are committed to being good stewards of your donations and ensuring that they are used to further our mission. By supporting us, you bless others and receive a blessing from us and God. Your generosity is very important and will be rewarded in heaven. If you would like to be a blessing and be part of our team by helping us with great, Jesus' great commission, please, I don't have a bulletin insert for you today, but uh, just um, know that uh, the Bibles cost $1.59, and we'd appreciate any generosity you show to us today. May I remind you of the great commission, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I will be with you always, even unto the end of the age. My own testimony. I had the opportunity, not long ago, as I came out from the doctor's office, a lady went ahead of me into her car, and I thought, well, why not? go to my car and get a testament, which I did. And I went to her car, she rolled down the window, and I gave it to her and I said, this Bible is for you. Later on that day, I was, I was assured by God that she had read the back page of that testament where it tells you how to receive Jesus Christ. And she became a Christian. I just believe that with all my heart. And it's a wonderful feeling to know that someone has received Jesus Christ as their Savior. Thank you, Pastor Steve, and your congregation for allowing me to share the work of the Gideons International. We are a team working with you to spread the gospel of God's love worldwide, finishing the work God gave us to accomplish. Thank you very much. Yeah, and God bless you all, and amen. Amen. Um, as we get to the time of our congregational prayer, I want to do a couple of things before we pray. One is just because it's the month of May, we're, we're uh, going through the prayer request for the Bowie people from uh, Tom and Angie. And uh, the passage for today uh, that they ask us to read is 3 John, verse 2. 3 John, verse 2. And... Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. 
And in those words, uh, we might recognize a song too, It Is Well With My Soul. And the prayer request is, Praise God that when troubles like sea billows roll, it is well with the souls of buoy believers. Pray that this truth may be a constant encouragement. And, and isn't it a constant encouragement when we see that uh, Christians keep going even when there's a hardship? Um, that it inspires us and encourages us uh, to be strong as well. So we'll pray for them. Also, a couple of other special requests. Uh, tomorrow, Mel Griffin turns 101. So uh, just to thank the Lord for the gift of life and uh, ask for God's blessings there. I also want to point out that uh, one of the quieter ministries in the church has reached a milestone. Uh, it's the quilting ministry that they have reached 1,000 quilts now that they have uh, put together and given uh, to people in need. And we are thankful for the milestone that, uh, that happened there. I mean, if I had to make 1,000 quilts, it'd probably take me like a week. I don't know. So... Thanks be to God for that milestone. And also, uh, we'll keep praying for uh, Nicaragua Christian Academy. They're looking for a sixth grade teacher, and uh, let's pray for that. We also want to lift up the Valentine family. Um, Bob Valentine's wife, Elaine, Eileen, passed away this past week, so we'll pray for God's comfort uh, for them. Um, also, just the cleanup and the restoration following the storms in the week. Uh, my wife has a friend who had quite a lot of damage on their farm, uh, lost a barn and some other things too. So uh, we'll pray for them, and especially Greenfield, Iowa, where it wasn't just stuff that was lost, but uh, people lost their lives. So let's um, go to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this good day and for an opportunity to hear of ministries that are moving the kingdom forward. Thank you for the Gideons. Reminds us of that a story in the Old Testament about a man who you used to do mighty things. And we continue to pray for the Gideons and we're thankful for faithful uh, ministers like Pastor Randy who are making an impact in the world for Jesus Christ. Uh, please bless the gift of the Bibles that people who receive them may read them and get closer to Jesus Christ and give their life to, to you. Thank you for the gift of life for Mill Griffin that she could celebrate her 101st birthday tomorrow and for her sharpness of mind and wit and uh, just being able to continue to make an impact on those around her. Uh, please be with her and bless her. Uh, we're grateful for the opportunity to come together with friends and use our gifts and uh, to make quilts and the joy of being able to do that together uh, for those involved and to be able to give and to make an impact on people. Um, please continue to be with them and bless those gifts and may the love that is shown there uh, be something that inspires and, again, draws others closer to Jesus. Thank you for the ministry of uh, the Van Zeus and the Nicaragua Christian Academy. Bless them as uh, they need a sixth grade teacher. May that person uh, come forward and serve in a faithful way. We pray for the Valentine family following the passing of Eileen. Be with Bob as he seeks to adjust to life and uh, give him peace and comfort following this uh, loss. Um, we lift up uh, the buoy people and we pray that they will persevere. They live in a, a land where Christianity is uh, a definite minority and where persecution does come. Um, be with them through the, the difficulties and the hardship. Keep them strong and inspire Christians around them, too, to be strong in their commitment to Christ. 
Lord, uh, we're grateful for, uh, for rain and moisture that's needed, but we know there were also winds and destruction that happened in this past week. We ask that you will uh, help the community of Greenfield, Iowa, following the passing of uh, five people, and that their relatives and friends will find peace and comfort in you. We pray as they rebuild that there will be restoration. We pray also for those we know who had uh, losses, a uh, barn, uh, maybe trees or big branches. Uh, we pray as restoration continues that things will look better and those who are involved will find encouragement to be able to keep going. Uh, we pray that there will be safety for those who clean up. Thank you for that so far here at church, that as the tree was started to get uh, cleaned up, that uh, there's, there's safety. Um, continue to be with that effort, too. And Lord, it's a special weekend for us as uh, Americans. We're mindful of those who have sacrificed their life for uh, our freedoms and defending this, this land. And uh, we're thankful for uh, those uh, sacrifices, but we also pray that you will bless our land and help us to enjoy the blessings that uh, you've given to us, the freedoms that we enjoy, for which we're thankful. Help us to live in a way that helps preserve them and continue uh, your goodness in this place. We also uh, lift up the causes for our offering today. Thankful for Timothy Christian School. Thank you for the students and the teachers, the administration there, for their faithful light in our community uh, bless them, and uh, as they head into summer months, that there may be time of refreshment, too, for all concerned. Uh, we pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we mentioned our offering in the prayer. The uh, offering causes for Timothy Christian School, and those plates are in the front and the back, but there's also a plate in the back for the Gideons, and uh, we encourage giving also uh, to that ministry as, we, um, as we're able and led, as the Spirit puts it on our heart to do that. Let's praise the Lord in song. And our next hymn is uh, 299, verse 1, 2, and 4. We'll stand and sing. The words are on the screen. May the Lord Jesus fill us with his love.
seated. I want to welcome the children forward for our children's moment today. Morning. Morning, everybody. Hey, cool. Good to see a good group here today. Hi, Bo. Hey, um, you guys remember earlier in the week, we had a storm. I don't know how many storms you remember in your life, but this was a big one, wasn't it? There was a lot of lightning and thunder and wind. I was uh, in my house helping my wife, and we heard a wind outside, and I went to a window to look. In the backyard, there was a really strong and healthy tree, but the wind bent the tree way over and we heard a snap and a big branch. The wind caused the branch to sail through the air and probably about 50 feet and down it went right on my, my wife's rhubarb plants. <laughs> oh no! Well, then in a little while after that, I went out to look after it when it was calm. And I got the branch away from it, and I thought, I kind of enjoy taking out my saw. So I thought, this is a good excuse. So I sawed it up, and I put it in our fire pit, and, and I burned some of it already. There's a little bit more to go. But the next morning, I just felt like I had to talk about it with somebody it was such a big storm. And I know that my mom worries a lot. And I knew from the news that there were a few t tornadoes in the storm that had hit in our state. And I figured I'd call my mom and tell her we were okay. So I called her, but this is what I heard. I'm not able to take your message right now. Please leave your name, number, and a message at the tone. And I thought, ah. That does, that's no good. I'll just call her later. So I hung up. Well, after that, I went to church, and I thought, I would like to read my next psalm today. And it's, I'm going through the book of the Psalms, and I got to Psalm 27, and there was a verse in Psalm 27 that said, Even if my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Now, it wasn't like my mom really was forsaking me. I think she was probably just too busy to take my call. And that happens sometime in life. I understand that. But I thought to myself, the Lord will receive me. I can always talk to God, and he's never too busy. So I thought, I'm going to talk to God right now. And I thought, I'm going to talk to him about the storm. So I said, dear Lord, there was a big storm last night. And then I thought to myself, I can just imagine the Lord saying, I know about it. I know all about that storm. Even so, I said, Lord, there was a big storm last night. And it hurt a lot of things. I saw a lot of bird nests in the yard. Those birds had to rebuild now. I think many of them probably did already, but it's a lot of work to build a house. And I think the Lord said, Steve, I know. I said, Lord, there was a big wind, and it blew over a big branch in my backyard, and even a whole tree at church. And I can imagine the Lord saying, I know. And I felt like God was saying to me, it will be okay. And I wanted to tell you guys this story this morning because I want a couple of things that you, you'd know. One, you can always talk to God, even when the grown-ups in your life are busy. And sometimes they, they have to be. Sometimes they're doing stuff that they have to do. But you can always talk to God. 
and it will be all right. That's all I have. Let's have a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for always being able to listen to your children when we pray to you, even during the storms of life, and that you are over all these things, and it's going to be okay. Please bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys, you can take a piece of candy on your way back. And if you're visiting, you get two pieces. The scripture reading today is the second sermon in the series from Revelation. And we did Revelation 1 uh, last time. Uh, we're doing Revelation 2, 1 through 7 uh, this time. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You've persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Contin uh, consider how far you've fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I'll come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Brothers and sisters, some of you have seen me with this, especially in the fall and the winter. As we have something at night and I have to walk home, I usually bring my flashlight. And as it's dark, it shows me the way forward. But sometimes this light grows dim. And when it does, I know it's time to put new batteries in this flashlight because I depend on it. I need it to be bright. I need it. So I try to maintain it and keep it going. Keeping it going. Keeping the light going. Remember last time we noticed in Revelation 1 that John was speaking to the churches about Jesus. Jesus, the priest, who is like the priests in the Old Testament, who had to stay in the holy place during the night, and tend the lampstands. There are seven lamps in that stand in the Old Testament. And the priest's job was to keep those lamps burning. And the message God gave to John to share with the churches is that Jesus is walking around the, the holy place, walking around the churches in the region. There are seven of them. And the notion or the idea that he was giving is that he is maintaining the, the shining of the church in the world today. And one of those places 
that's listed is the city of Ephesus, where there is a Christian church. Now, if you go to Ephesus today, not much there. It's destroyed. But during this time, the first century, it was a, a very important city. It had a harbor. It had um, a marketplace, an agora, as they called it. It had a couple of gymnasiums, a couple of Roman-style baths. It had a number of temples to other gods. There was a Jewish synagogue there. God was building a church there. A church there through a man he had called and sent by the name of Paul. You can see Ephesus is a really strategic place in the ancient world. A lot of people there. There's a harbor. There's people coming and going really all throughout the region who stop in Ephesus on their way to or from. And to be able to have a light there would make quite an impact. And for Paul to have some time there. When he got to Ephesus, he found there were some people who were followers of John, uh, but they needed to know more. He helped them with that. He baptized some of the followers of John into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Almighty God blessed that. The Holy Spirit came and began an awesome ministry in Ephesus through Paul. He was able to spend a couple of months in the Jewish synagogue in Ephesus telling about Jesus Christ. But there arose some opposition, as quite often happened in Paul's ministry. There was opposition, and he needed to continue his, else, his ministry outside of the synagogue, so he found a place. Uh, it was called the Lecture Hall of Tyrannus. He spent two years there and talking about Jesus, preaching the gospel, and impacting a lot of people. In Acts 19, verse 10, the scriptures tell us that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. And you think, wow, that ministry that Paul had, whether it was directly at the lecture hall or from people that heard him, maybe at the lecture hall and then went throughout the region, sharing the news of Christ, people were hearing the word of the Lord. And extraordinary things were happening. Things that I read about and I think, what? Even a handkerchief that touched the Apostle Paul was used to bring healing. Even an apron that touched him could be taken to a sick person to be cured with that. God was doing remarkable, amazing miracles and healing people. Evil spirits were being cast out. Falsehood was being recognized. And even in one instance, there were sorcerers who were convinced that they were astray and that their guidebooks needed to be burned. So they brought their books and they burned all their sorcery books. And thousands, I mean, the equivalent of thousands and thousands of dollars worth of books destroyed uh, that were evil books, helping others do sorcery. Demetrius was an idol maker, and he noticed that his business wasn't as good as it was before that as a silversmith, he was making fewer idols, and he thought it was probably because of Paul, and he was probably right. So he caused a stir, and even wanted a riot in the city against these Christians. Well, thankfully, the city clerk was there, and the clerk says, hey, let's keep this from getting any worse, and succeeded in that, 
And yet the Apostle Paul says, maybe it's time because, well, we'll notice a little bit what caused Paul to leave the church there, but one of the things was he had the call to continue God's ministry in other areas. He went north to Troas and then uh, across to Philippi and Thessalonica and Berea and so on. This is his third uh, missionary uh, journey. I think one of the reasons that uh, he decided that it was time to go wasn't so much the pressure from, um, from unbelieving persecutions, um, but before he went back to Jerusalem, uh, he was in Miletus. After a while of being in Greece, backtracks, goes to Miletus. And he had already encouraged the believers in Ephesus before he left, but he calls the elders to come to him at Miletus of Ephesus. And here's some of the words that he says to them. And I think kind of help us to see Paul's call, his sense of mission. He says, I haven't hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. He had the sense that he had given to them everything that God had given him to give. And then he says, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Remember that he's telling this to elders. And he says, be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. By the way, these words are still used in our uh, elder ordination form today. We still hear these words when elders are ordained and installed. And Paul says, I know after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and won't spare the flock. Even from your own numbers, some will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. Uh, so be on your guard. And in Revelation 2, we read about the Nicolaitans being there. And uh, you know, that word of Paul seems to have come true in, in that case. Uh, we'll get more about the Nicolaitans in a minute. But as he shares with the elders of Ephesus, we read something grieved the elders. What grieved them most was his statement they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. There was a lot of love from Paul to the Ephesians, from the Ephesians to Paul, from the leaders to Paul, from Paul to the leaders. And when he left them, it was kind of one of those cases of gone but not forgotten. Because as Paul continued to minister, God inspired him to write them a letter a letter that Christians today still treasure and hold dear, read, are blessed with, the letter to the church at Ephesus. And in that letter, there's so many times where Paul talks about love. I'd like to share some of these. I think they're awesome. One is Ephesians 3, 16 to 19, and Paul had already earlier talked about the love that they had and he had heard about it. It was a remarkable thing what was going on in the church there. But he says this, I'm praying out of the Father's glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love you know, something, an outstanding thing that they had. That you may have power, together with all the Lord's people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now imagine being in Ephesus and coming to church and saying, hey, we have a letter from Paul we'd like to share. And you're reading about how he's praying for you. What an encouraging thing it would be to know that. And um, Brother Randy just told me yesterday how he was praying for me. And I was like, oh, praise God, thank you, you know. 
Uh, we pray for each other. It's something we lovingly do as Christians. Well, then in a couple of more parts of his letter, a little bit further on, he says, follow God's example as dearly loved children walk in the way of love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. The way of love. And there, we know there's a few different words for love in the Bible. The word that is used, well, in 1 Corinthians 13 also, here is the word agape, agape love. It's love for God, love for others. Sometimes it uh, has that sense. It's, it's a way. And I was reflecting a little bit about that way of agape uh, and saying, what, how can I help us in the way of agape for God and for others. And one of the things to point out about agape is it isn't necessarily something that is confined to a feeling. I think in, in our culture today, uh, sometimes we hear it kind of flippantly used about loving this or loving that and, and oh, I don't, love, I don't love him anymore because I just don't have that feeling in my heart. But this love is something that can operate and needs to operate even when the feeling isn't there. So that we always have the call to love each other, whether we feel like doing it or not, we do. We're to reach out in a loving way, a loving deed or action, and sometimes the feeling follows the deed. Uh, you do a loving thing and the feeling comes afterwards. Sometimes it's before. So I, I don't want to minimize that either. Sometimes we have a, a loving feeling that prompts us to do something. Um, but really, I like the phrase that it, it's a way of love. Uh, sometimes the feeling might be there, sometimes not. Uh, the deeds are called to be there, whether or not the feeling is there. And sometimes the feelings follow the deeds. Live in the way of agape. And you know what? That's going to make an impact around you. You live in a loving way, and it's going to shine in dark places. And there's plenty of dark places in the world. We heard some of them earlier from our Gideon's report in the prison and in, in uh, lives that were uh, affected with drugs. Um, we can shine, and, and I know some of us in this church have sh already shined a loving light into uh, dark places like those. And just a few verses later in Ephesians, Paul says, You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. And I think when he says that, he's essentially telling them to love, to have agape, not only for God, but for one another. The only thing is, later on, as we read, love became an issue in Ephesus. It became an issue. And their loving chief priest went to them, and he had some words for the church in Ephesus, and they're words from a caring heart. And I feel that, you know, following Jesus' example of love, he does a beautiful thing here, First, he commends for what's good. I think sometimes love can take a good lesson in that. Look to the good first before we have a, a scathing critique about something to look for what is good. And Jesus did that here. And he, he says, if we have our scriptures open, uh, I know your deeds, your hard work, you Christians in Ephesus, you're, you're hard workers. And you're persevering. This is not an easy place to, to hold to the truth of the gospel of Jesus. There's other temples all over the place. There's immorality going on, and people want to join in, want you to join in uh, in these things all the time. But I know you're persevering. And you cannot tolerate wicked people. You've tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. Um... That may refer to uh, those who are, were false apostles and the church there tested them and, and a, a false apostle wouldn't be able to gain traction there because they were discerning, they were able to notice. 
things that were true and, and what were not, not true. You've been persevered and endured hardship for my name, and you haven't grown weary. And later on, Jesus says, you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. We might say, well, who's a Nicolaitan? And when I looked it up in my study Bible, it said there's a group within the church there even that wanted to concede to some of the pressures around them in the society around them and join in with immorality and idolatry. And I suppose you know, there can always be temptations to the Christian church from the world around us, um, but we're still called to persevere in the truth, uh, to be faithful. And they were doing that as a whole, as a church. So the Lord Jesus and his caring heart first notices the good that was going on. But he also helps them to move into something that really had to be addressed. And it was love. It was this agape that we talked about. He says, I hold this against you. You've forsaken the love you had at first. And Jesus knew, you know, what had happened in the ministry of Paul and the elders and the, the church members there and all the different loving things they did that was a light that was heard around the, the world, their, their world. But you've forsaken the love you've had at first and Jesus called them to return to it. He says, repent, turn around, do the things you did at first. Now another idea that this agape that we're thinking about is something that's active. Do the things you did at first. Otherwise, I'm going to have to remove your lampstand. Uh, that light that you're shining, it, it's broken. It can't, can't shine and it'll have to be removed. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Now when uh, the Lord Jesus says that, he's not just saying, okay, listen to this. It's more the idea of having a sense of what God wants me to do and then responding in a faithful way. God wants me to love my fellow Christians and love other people in the world around me. So I got to get to it. If I feel it or not, I got to get to it. And to those who are victorious, he promised, I'll give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. A, a grand promise, everlasting life in the paradise of God. So love, agape. The church has to be the church. And without love, it isn't the church. Ephesians, that last part of that letter, Paul says, follow God's example as dearly loved children and walk. Walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering, as a sacrifice to God. Then John, author of Revelation, earlier in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know you're my disciples if you love one another. So, let the light shine and keep shining in the church today, uh, whether it's here in Wellsburg, whatever congregation you're in, wherever you're listening today, let the light of Jesus Christ and his love shine out in a dark world and when it does the church is being the church let us pray Father you work to keep the light burning in this world help us to learn from the Ephesians help us to learn from this part of your word in Revelation to be the church to live in a loving way First of all, to you, but also to one another and the world around us, even in dark places, to shine. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's sing in response um, our hymn of response. 
Ah, here's the bulletin right in front of me. You know, I was all upset yesterday that I lost my dog leash. And Melissa said, it's right here where you left it. There's the bulletin. Let's, let's sing in response. Um, the hymn is, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We'll stand and sing. The words will be on the screen. They'll know we are Christians by our love. As we go out to shine, whether it's in a ministry of Bible giving, whether it's a ministry of uh, living in this community uh, for the Lord, shining that way, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord give you his peace. Amen. The servant song is our closing hymn, 309, 1-3. Let me be your servant.